So our first speaker today for our panel discussion is Dr. Mike Gable. Uh, Mike and his wife Kathy are originally from Cincinnati, and they now have four sons and five grandchildren. In the 19... <laughs> In the 1970s, uh, he served as a lay Franciscan missionary in Honduras. In the 1980s, uh, he and his family served with Marionol missionaries at the Justice and Peace Office in Marionol, New York. He later ser uh, they served as a missionary family in Bolivia and Venezuela. He has been involved in parish ministry, and he holds a master's degree in religious education and theology and a doctorate in missiology. Uh, Dr. Gable teaches theology part-time at Xavier University in Cincinnati and Mount St. Joseph University, while also uh, serving on the board of the U.S. Catholic Mission Association and also the American Society of Missiology. Uh, missiology is just a fancy term for the theology of mission, uh, and so that's why he is our distinguished speaker today. So, Mike. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Buenas tardes, hermanos y hermanas. La paz de Cristo con todo de nosotros, ¿verdad? Ya sé, sí. It's a real honor to be with you today to celebrate the spirit-filled missionary work of the precious blood fathers. I've been blessed to have priests like Father Larry Hemmergarten on my mission office advisory board of the Archdiocese. I've been blessed to have people like Bill Nordenbrock who provided me an excellent understanding of what parish twinning is about early on. And I'm grateful for people like, gee, Father Tom Hem, who've been friends of mine, Joe Deardorff, and God bless Father Ernie Ranley, huh? What a holy guy he was. He's looking down on us today, no? He'd be very proud of what you all have accomplished here. I'm also grateful for my visit with my wife, Kathy, uh, when Mark Gisegui and Jean uh, took us to visit the Precious Blood Missionaries in Chile last November. What a terrific legacy you all have there. My goodness. Um, I've been asked to talk about the third wave of mission. This is an idea that uh, a great scholar, Precious Blood Missionary, Father Robert Schreider, put together, he introduced me to. And I've been asked to briefly explain what this third wave is about. Many of the same points are the same points that Father Barry had made. Oh, I'm sorry, Father Pepe. Um, as Father Schreider puts it, the first wave of Christian mission came about uh, out of the first round of globalization when the Portuguese and the Spanish began voyages in the 15th century to Africa, Asia, and the Americas. On these trips, led by military and merchant traders, individual Catholic missionaries came from religious orders like the Franciscans and they came along to Christianize the people where they, that they encountered. The French, the Dutch, the English did the same thing because of the advancements of sailing ships and nautical tools. But conscious, comprehensive plans for mission work only started to emerge with Pope Gregory the Fifteenth, with the establishment of the Congregation of the Pontifical uh, propagation of the faith in Rome in 1622 that still exists. Our mission office is a local franchise of, of the propagation of faith. The second wave of globalization lasted roughly from 1800 to 1914 when the Europeans built their colonial powers around the world. This prompted a rise in missionary activity among Protestants as they founded many new missionary orders and a lot of Roman Catholic religious orders began to survive or begin to start uh, and be established in the same manner to serve in foreign lands like the Precious Blood Fathers and Marino. So, uh, and so there were religious institutional structures were designed to make mission work by whole large groups more possible. The invention of the steamship shortened the time of sea travel and faster communication by mail. The First World War, though, started the decline of the European colonial empires. And at the same time, it took some decades for Catholics and some Protestant missionary groups to critically re review and transform their missionary attitudes and practices. Unfortunately, many, not all, but many missionary organizations came to realize that sometimes they had become quite paternalistic and too closely related to imperialistic and political powers. 
Now, the third wave of globalization began around 1980 and continues today because of the development of air travel, the digital revolution with the Internet, and cell phone technology. Time and space have now been compressed. This has allowed for the third wave of mission to develop where travel and communication is reduced from weeks to seconds. Short-term mission efforts are now possible where lay people can have encounters and build relationships with others around the globe more quickly than ever. As a result, the third wave of mission includes not just long-term missionary professionals, but also includes these three kinds of endeavors. Number one, parish twinning, where ordinary lay people like us can develop long-term friendships and partnerships with Christians in other parts of the United States or around the world. Number two, it includes short-term or longer-term lay missionary work here or overseas. And finally, third world mission involves mission or immersion trips that many of you have been involved with already. We now see that these boundaries of time and space have been blurred, which are producing tremendous exchange of ideas. Our world, and especially youth today, are more pluralistic in ethnicity and religion than ever before. Social, political, cultural, economic, religious waves of change are moving rapidly today. Just think of the political revolutions that followed the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 or the Arab Spring of 2010. And today, in Christian mission, the Pentecostal faith is spreading like wildfire around the world. While this third wave of mission is exciting and empowering for many of us lay people with great potential for good, there's also the, the potential to repeat many of the same paternalistic and imperialistic sins of the past. Father Schreider calls for more training for us for cultural sensitivity and urges us to become more aware of subtle racism and colonial mentalities that can still plague our efforts. He wants us to steer away from missionary patterns of dominance, of dependency, inferiority. Like Pope Francis, Father Schreider reminds us to embrace missionary attitudes of mutuality, accompaniment with the poor and people of other cultures. He encourages us to do what we call social analysis, to pursue social justice, care for the environment, which are so crucial if we're going to survive this century. It's been a real blessing for me in my ministry to see the growth of mission trips in this diocese, short-term mission work, and we now have 45 parishes and 20 relationships along with some schools. And much of this has come about because of the long-term efforts and the amazing influence of the precious blood missionaries of our diocese, of which we are all very grateful. Do I have an amen? Amen. Thank you.